In this video, I'll be reacting to one of the videos from the YouTube channel of the Game Theorists. Um, I'm a huge fan of their work. I hope that you will like this video as well. This video is from the YouTube channel of the Game. Pfft. This video came out in 2019, so I think it's around two years ago. Let's start. Let's have a little bit of a real talk for a second. Normally, I'm a little dramatic. I say things are terrifying. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> it's like a little dramatic. You don't say when they definitely aren't. Nobody is legitimately scared of Pokemon Evolution, Mario's fist, Steve or Alex's biceps, or any other thing that I've yelled about. No Steve, uh, Steve's or Alex's biceps, because, you know, they're strong in Minecraft. Nobody's ever pissed the bed because the water in Fallout is super radioactive. Nobody's gone to therapy because Spider-Man is murdering folk. And nobody's been put on medication because the giants in Skyrim are living bombs. But what I'm talking about today, this is the real stuff. I'm talking about things that affect real people every day across the world. I'm talking about the most deadly threat to human existence, something that's been stalking and killing us ever since our birth as a species, a predator that's been growing alongside us, evolving and killing more of us than any other single cause of death. One- Um, we have killed more humans. Um, mosquitoes, I guess? Mosquitoes, um, killed more humans, um, Human killing human, I guess, for, for, for millions of years, so probably. That's been able to learn over time how to become immune to our best and strongest weapons against it. It's currently the most deadly disease on planet Earth, and it killed Arthur Morgan. I'm talking, of course, of the disease tuberculosis. So if you're easily frightened or have a heart condition, now's your warning to turn this video off. Because for the first time ever on this show, it's time for us to step out of the world of video games and into real life. All right, um, I'm so sorry for the laughter. This video is going to be very serious. Very, very, very serious. Viewer discretion is advised. Where real people die every single day. Are you ready? Then let's go. I decided to do this video because, honestly, the more I read about tuberculosis, the more amazed I was. It's the kind of thing that when you start trailing down the Wikipedia article for a summary, if you live in the United States, your eyes grow wide. Phrases like, the number one cause of death from an infectious disease float across your eyes and you wonder, can that be right? What's the source on that? Oh, the World Health Organization. Oh, the WHO, World Health Organization. World Health Organization, back in 2018. What is the bar on the top left corner? What does it mean? Holy crap! Today is a bit of a weird episode for me. I tried to write this section in particular probably a dozen times and just could not get it right. But I think I finally kind of sort of have it. We're going to go over Arthur Morgan's case piece by piece and paint a picture of his prognosis, what he could have done to increase his chances of survival, and conclude whether or not his death, aka his redemption, was inevitable. So, first things first. What? is tuberculosis. What, what is tuberculosis? Good question. Tuberculosis, known specifically as Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Micro, uh, micro bacterium tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. Tabu. Is really, really old. It's not known with any degree of certainty whether it or leprosy is older, but given that they're both from the same genus, Mycobacterium, and both work somewhat similarly, it doesn't really matter which of them actually came first. Our most accurate estimate suggests that tuberculosis evolved sometime between 50,000 and 70,000 years ago. Oh my gosh, that's 
a long, long time ago. It's not millions, but still, that's still very long. Oh gosh. Back when the human population could have been as small as 1,000. So this is a disease that's been hunting us basically as long as we've existed. And in all likelihood, co-evolved alongside us. You contract tuberculosis when the bacteria reaches the pulmonary alveolus, the endpoint of the branches of your bronchi responsible for gas exchange, where they then begin to replicate immediately. M. tuberculosis replicates slower than most bacteria, but it may makes up for this by being incredibly rugged, and as few as 10 tuberculosis bacteria can replicate into active infection. People are introduced to the illness exactly like Arthur Morgan is, by being coughed on. Each cough or sneeze can release tens of thousands of droplets of blood and mucus that each carry the disease, and breathing them in can spell disaster. And in the time and day of Red Dead Redemption 2, there would have been like signs like these that would have been warning people to avoid coughing and spitting to reduce the spread of the disease. No, that's the thing. Back in the days in the game, right? Back in the days, medic medical care is not as sophisticated as right now in the year 2021. You know, that's a good thing that we have improved. Right? Anyway, back to the lungs. M. tuberculosis is covered in a thin, waxy coating on its cell surface that's made up of mycolic acid chains. And it's these acid chains that are the key to its resilience and, horrifyingly, its dependence on our immune system to multiply. Like HIV, tuberculosis turns our own body's defenses against us. As soon as our- Reverse trap. <laughs> you know, I really like it that uh, Austin used uh, you give a reference. Reverse trap. Our body detects the presence of M. tuberculosis in our system, it sends what's known as macrophages out to destroy them. Macrophages are the shock troops of the immune system, and they basically eat stuff that's not supposed to be in our body. However, when macrophages attempt to eat tuberculosis in a process known as phagocytosis from- Wow, I'm just gonna say this, this is gonna be a very nerdy and geeky video. So many scientific big words. The Greek phagian, meaning to devour, and kytos, meaning presence in blood. Wait, okay, no, that's the wrong show and the wrong translation. Kytos just means cell, so literally cell that eats. Anyway, what happens is the macrophage envelops M. tuberculosis, throws it in a bag filled with oxygen and acid in an attempt to basically melt it to death, but the waxy mycolic acid chains protect the tuberculosis bacteria from disintegration like its own personal Darth no, Vader and it's control. here that things start to get out of control because like the false protection. The bacteria just lives inside the macrophage and replicates over and over and over until it literally punches its way out like an alien chest burster, spreading hundreds of new tuberculosis cells throughout your body. It's here that we cross the point of no return. Once the bacteria has entered your pulmonary alveoli and burst out of a macrophage, your chance of dying skyrockets to 66%. You now have an active infection and the clock is ticking. But believe it or not, while you may think Arthur Morgan was doomed the instant he got coughed on by Mr. Downs, that's not actually true. You see, before tuberculosis progresses to an active stage, it has a latency period where it can stay for years. A ton of people have tuberculosis and are asymptomatic because the bacteria never gets to the alveolar air sacs. Up oh, so it, they are asymptomatic. That means even if I had it, I would not necessarily suffer from it. So... To 90% of people who get infected with tuberculosis never progress to active state. So what oh. made Arthur Morgan so lucky? Or, I guess, unlucky? His life. Everything he chose to do with his life was a risk factor for disease, and pretty much guaranteed that the instant he was exposed to the bacteria, he was going to not only get infected, but die. The mortality rate for untreated active tuberculosis is at least 50%, but can be as high as two-thirds of patients. But there are a lot of things that increase your risk factors. People who smoke, for example, double their risk of tuberculosis infection, and Arthur is an avid smoker. 
her. A lot of it is up to player choice, but it's shown multiple times that he smokes on his own. Arthur also drinks quite a bit, with an entire mission, easily the best part of the game, being dedicated to getting blackout drunk. This isn't an anomaly, and it in fact would be much more surprising if Arthur Morgan wasn't a bon vivant. In the 1800s, the average man consumed seven gallons of ethanol. Pure ethanol amounts, mind I'm sorry, what? That is bad for your body. Absolutely bad for your body. Gosh. You... What is 70 minutes? Do per year, which translates into over... What is the top left corner? Four and a half beers per day, or over 1,659 bottles of beer per year. Over 155 gallons of beer per year, and you wonder why prohibitionists existed. Cigarettes and alcoholism both increase the risk of progression by a huge amount because, well, cigarettes cause direct damage to your lungs, and alcohol can weaken your immune system and cause dehydration. In True. So. Alcohol causes, um, okay, alcohol weakens your immune system, causes dehydration. Um, smoking direct impact to your lungs. Tuberculosis is a win-win for them. That is, it's a lose-lose for them. If you think about it. In fact, all sorts of immunocompromising conditions can increase your chances of tuberculosis progression. HIV is a major factor, but this wasn't a problem in America at the time of Red Dead Redemption 2 and probably wasn't a thing at all until the early 20th century. However, there's one big fat event that happens in Arthur Morgan's life that utterly and completely dooms him, and it's when he's shot, kidnapped, and tortured by the O'Driscoll gang in Chapter 3. Being shot with a gun and not being properly fed for days means he's going to be suffering from physical trauma and malnutrition, both of which increase the like- Malnutrition, uh, impact child development, compromised immune system, infection disease, energy loss, re reduced productivity, poverty, impact the development of education and health system, uh, so so social, uh, economic and political instability. Gosh, no. No, we're all human. Can't we just care for each other? Just show compassion. Be positive about it. After all, we're just humans. We're just homo sapiens. Likelihood that his tuberculosis will progress. Malnutrition suppresses the immune system, and physical trauma, even medical trauma from surgery, greatly increases your chance of getting all kinds of secondary infections, what's known as the two hit response. It's here, at this moment, that Arthur Morgan's fate is solidified. And it's telling that the first real cough that you see from him is after this point in the game. This means that oh. Arthur 100% caused his own death. No, he didn't know that smoking would make things worse and everybody at the time was drinking like a fish, but it was his life that put him in this position in the first place. His life, his choices, those put him in harm's way and made his death inevitable. This is the core thesis of the Red Dead Redemption series, that choices have consequences, and a life of murder, violence, and crime has a price tag that can't be avoided. Attention must be paid. And if he wasn't an outlaw enforcer for a loan shark, he wouldn't have been exposed to tuberculosis. If he wasn't living a risky life of constant violence with no time to rest at all, it's possible he could have recovered from his infection, or possibly not even progressed progressed into active tuberculosis at all. It's true, it could have progressed to non-active, even if he is suffering from it, he will not suffer that much. Am I saying it correctly? Choices have consequences. And it's this realization that a life lived a certain way has a price that drives Arthur's decisions and motivations after his diagnosis, to try to leave a legacy behind, to try to lift up other people out of this life. He knows his fate. He knows that the life he leads, one that doesn't allow for rest or peace, does not put him in the 34% survival bracket. From his diagnosis on, he knows what's gonna happen to him, and and he accepts it. That's his redemption. Oh. That is his redemption. That is his redemption. His legacy. He knows he's gonna die soon. We're trying to help, but 
bring positivity and, and uplifting environment for for us. Follow you into the dark. It's fitting that they used to call tuberculosis the romantic disease, and it's a fitting end for an outlaw who led a kind of gray life. What's less romantic is that right now, every single day, people on Earth, our real world, die horrifically from tuberculosis. It's the single most deadly disease on our planet. It kills more people than HIV every single year. Throughout- What? Um, I mean, um, um, since 2020 came about, COVID-19 came about, well, you can add one more list. You can add one more to the list. Gosh. And some more is. It's also a virus. It's also something. It's also an illness, a disease that's spread uh, through. What droplets. History, it's killed an estimated 10.7 billion people total. More than every war what? ever fought, HIV, Ebola, the Black Death, car crashes, snake bites, and falling deaths combined. Binds. Right now, 25% of the entire human population is infected, and over 1.3 million of them will die. Let me put this into a real number that you'll understand at a glance. You see that counter that's been on the screen for this whole video? Yeah, 27. Um, it's just really sad that... Just stop smoking. Stop. Drinking so much. Just stop drinking. Just stop smoking. Come on. I we don't want you to die that fast. But we don't want you to suffer. We are all humans. That's how many people have died from tuberculosis while you've been watching them. <gasps> what? Gosh. Twenty seven people. Real people. Because while tuberculosis has largely been eradicated in the United States with only 9,093 new cases in 2017 due to vaccines and antibiotics, most of the world does not have access to these treatments. In large sections of the world, if you get tuberculosis, you have no choice but to deal with it. And in some cases, even medication won't help because tuberculosis has many antibiotic resistant strains now, meaning our one tool for combating it has become obsolete. This revelation blew my mind. 1.3 million, million deaths every year, mostly children and the elderly and those infected with HIV. That is absolutely horrible. And I honestly haven't been aware of how lucky I am to live in the United States in a long time than by learning this fact alone. Tuberculosis is one of the number one causes of human death and is the number one cause, depending upon how you count, and is absolutely the number one cause in our entire human history. And I don't hear about it, ever. This is likely the first time you have heard about it. People get infected and can suffer in waves for months as their body heals a bit, recovers, and relapses until a- Yeah, the, the human body heals a bit, recover, then relapse. Then heal a bit, recover, then relapse again. Eventually, their lungs just stop working because they're too damaged and they suffocate. But there actually is hope. Every day, people like TB Alliance are fighting to find more effective treatments for tuberculosis to hopefully undo the damage its growing immunity to antibiotics is causing, while charities like TB Alert and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation try to bring existing treatments to people in need on the ground. Links to all three of these charities that I personally vetted myself are in the description and if you can give money I definitely recommend that you do so even as little as a dollar can save a life either today by getting treatment to those who need it or 10 years from now when a new treatment is discovered because we're all humans on this planet together we should do what we can to help those of us who are in need like Arthur Morgan trying to forge a future for his adopted family we should do what we I literally just noticed that uh, now that I'm repeating myself. Can to help those of us who are in need. It doesn't take a lot. A little I'm only human. We are all bit humans. from a lot of people goes a long, long way to making a better world. Not just a better world for us, but for those who are gonna come after we're gone. Just something to think about. 
Sincerely, Austin. Living the legacy, living a world as a better place. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you do like this video, please consider to watch more of their videos from the YouTube channel, The Game Theorists. Well, yeah, this video is very important. It's just very important. We learned a lot about what we should avoid. Please avoid smoking. Please avoid drinking. You know you've seen, you learned the, the negative effects please stop there are consequences in life even small consequences small changes in life but big consequences down the road please we are all humans we learn we make mistakes when we learn thank you so much if you like my videos, please consider to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And comment down below if you have any share of us. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Do follow my channel. Thank you so much. But hey, that's just a fact. A human fact. Thanks for watching. We are all humans. humans.